Hello everyone and welcome back to the sickest characters in fighting game history, a mini-series where we reflect and look over the coolest and most interesting character designs across different fighting games. Today we'll be taking a look at Samurai Showdown's Tokugawa Yoshitora, a rushdown character with some incredibly interesting tools and gimmicks in his kit. To start off, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, he is in fact carrying a lot of swords. Each sword is tied to a specific special move, of which he has seven in total, and Yoshitora has a unique win condition based around these seven swords. When Yoshi starts a round, he only has access to six of his sword special moves, with the seventh and biggest sword being locked behind a very unique requirement. In order to use his seventh sword, Yoshitora must land a hit with every single one of his special moves. Hitting a special grants him a flower, which is a resource that carries between rounds. Once he gets all six differently colored flowers, he unlocks his seventh sword, Yochoka, which does this. It's also worth noting that this special move is plus on block, so on block or on hit, if Yoshitora is able to get this special move out, you're pretty much done. So yeah, if Yoshitora hits all of his special moves in a game, he pretty much wins. But it's not exactly as easy as it seems. Three of his specials are pretty easy to get the flowers for, all being able to be comboed into... with one actually being his invincible DP, but the other three flowers are a little tougher. But before we get into that, I'd like to give a real quick shout out to Asago for being the funniest and most time-consuming way to end a combo in almost any fighting game I've ever seen. Uh, this move takes an insane amount of time to complete, and it's usually not super optimal because even though it does do the most damage, Again, it wastes a lot of time, which is um, sometimes bad for an offensive character, you know, less time to approach. But it's also kind of bad because it gives your opponent a lot of rage, so a lot of times ending a combo with a little less damage is better because they don't get access to rage. But, uh, I mean, if you end every combo with this move, your opponent is going to be mad, and so you have the tilt factor, so <laughs> that's, that's at least something. Yoshi's Botan is an aerial attack which can be Kara cancelled from his standard overhead to let him use it as an instant overhead but it can be punished quite easily on block. Yugao is a strong command grab, but it side switches on hit and is risky to go for considering Yoshi doesn't have the greatest neutral buttons to enforce strike throw. And his hardest flower to get is tied to Tsubaki's B and C versions, which is an armored hop that leaps in a downward slash. However, the slash is very slow and can be blocked even if Yoshi armors through an attack with the hop, as well as very punishable on block. Of course, if Yoshi is able to get this flower early, the other specials are cakewalks compared to this one, but the best thing about Yoshitora is that he doesn't even need to try for the seventh sword to be an overwhelmingly good character. That's right. Turns out, giving Yoshitora six well-kitted special moves is enough to make him viable without a silly little win condition. Sporting a DP, a long-range low, an instant overhead, command grab, and high damage combo moves. That's not something you can say about nearly any other character in this game. To top it off, Yoshitora sports probably the best aerial button in the entire game with his JC. This thing is a monster of a button. It's four times, extremely hard to anti-air, leads into beefy combos on hit, and gives him enough plus frames to enforce a mix-up with his instant overhead or a low on block. The only true weakness of this air attack is that it trades disfavorably in air-to-air -air interactions. But luckily, Yoshitora has some great anti-airs in Sinadeshko, Shiryuri, 6-6-C, 2-B, and even sometimes B Tsubaki. This aerial attack is so scary, some characters have to forego even thinking about contesting it in favor of just trying for an IB then guard canceling it. But don't worry, Yoshitora has something for that too. Because the threat of his JC is so massive, he can very often get away with simply empty jumping or whiffing a JB then landing and throwing the opponent, 
since if the opponent were to try to stuff this mix-up attempt, they're putting themselves at the risk of eating a JC starter combo, which is not something they want to do in the slightest. Not to mention this JB has a cross-up hitbox and is also a decent air-to-air, -air, so it's safe to say Yoshitora's air presence is undeniably terrifying. On the ground, Yoshitora is a bit weaker than in the air. His grounded buttons are quite short range and high recovery, with the exception of this little old button. Now, would you believe me if I told you this was his worst button by far, and maybe one of the worst buttons in the game? So, how could this button be bad? The simplest answer is that it's very slow and very punishable, but it actually runs deeper than that. You see, with the way multi-hits work in this game, you can jump and intentionally get hit by the first hit, then completely avoid the rest of them for a massive punish. And if that wasn't bad enough, if you do just block it normally, it's pretty easy to time IBs for the remaining 5 hits. So effectively, pressing this button means you're giving your opponent 30% meter and a big punish, with the reward being okay damage and minus on it. The only real use for this button is to guard break. But even then, if the opponent is good at IBing, they can just IB the whole move and avoid the guard break entirely. Now that we've gone through his toolkit, let's talk about how he plays. As I mentioned, Yoshi plays a rushdown-oriented playstyle thanks to his solid mix-ups and up-close buttons, and mostly uses his incredible jump-ins as a way to take space and start pressure. He's a jack-of-all-trades, sporting at least one tool for almost any scenario, so it's very hard to get Yoshi into a situation he's uncomfortable with, which adds to his potency. Generally, he wants to be looking for an opening to get his jump C out, but if the opponent is contesting it well, he can use A's Tsubaki as a low-risk armored approach option. Once in range, Yoshitora's A Nadeshko becomes an insanely high damage combo tool and makes his mid-range game a lot more potent. Unfortunately, Yoshi's weapon flip is one of the weaker ones in the game, requiring a throw in order to land it consistently, but given how threatening Yoshitora is on offense, he gets an opening to throw the opponent a lot more than you might think. One would think that when Yoshi's game plan relies so heavily on weapons, so much so that he brings seven of them, that losing his weapon would be the end of the game for him. But Yoshi actually has a surprisingly decent weaponless state due to his dashing A being quite fast, safe on block, and granting him a hard knockdown, which gives him time to go get his weapon back. Meanwhile, losing your weapon against Yoshitora is a death sentence due to his incredibly high damage and strong up close tools, allowing him to camp the opponent's sword very well, then convert into high damage if they dare to try to pick it up without knocking him down first. And if they try to play passive, Yoshitora's high chip damage will force the opponent to eventually take initiative, lest they lose the round of chip. Overall, Yoshitora is a monster of a rushdown character with incredibly potent up-close options, powerful tools for closing the distance, and an extremely well-rounded kit outside of his already amazing pressure. Oh yeah, and if he gets the seventh sword, he just does. Now, before I close out this video, I wanted to give a brief recommendation for this game. Samurai Shodan is currently one of my favorite fighting games to play and is a breath of fresh air for anyone who tends to get frustrated at modern fighters like Strive or Street Fighter V. They do so much different, and it all culminates together in a fighting game experience that's like nothing I've ever played before, and I strongly recommend you go check it out for yourself. As of now, it's on sale on PSN, so this is the best time to get into it. I hope all of you liked this look into one of the game's most unique characters, and with that out of the way, this has been Adventure, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.